Okay. All right. I think we are recording. Yes, we are. Perfect. Okay. All right. So I'm here with I Lily Williams. Lily is the author and illustrator of hey. If Polar Bears Disappeared, as well as two other books in that series and uh, some other books as well. But today we're going to be talking about polar bears. Um, now, this is the second book in the If an Animal Disappeared series. Is that right? Yeah, that's the second one. There are three out right now, and I believe If Bees Disappeared comes out next year. If Bees Disappeared, and then was there another one that's on the way as well, or planned for the future? Um, if Bees Disappeared, and then that should be followed by If Tigers Disappeared, and that's all I know right now. Oh, that's great. I love a series. I know that all the students um, in our school really love this series. My uh, daughter's kindergarten teacher read A Sharks Disappeared, um, and I actually gave her one oh, of your friends of, uh, of the sharks. Oh, awesome. So much, and the kids loved it so much. Yeah, so where did this- That's awesome. Yeah, where did the, um, the concept for this series come from? Um, it came from this idea that I felt like when we talk about, for me it was sharks initially, it was the first one. So it came about, when we talk about animals and endangered species, we often say like, well, they're important. And then, you know, like this, that information is sort of like left to the scientists, like why they're important. So with sharks, I wanted to figure out how to explain to someone like myself, like an artist or someone who doesn't, um, who isn't a scientist, like how, how is this important and why do we need to care about it? Um, so it sprang out of that kind of like mission. I want this to be understandable to someone who has no, um, you know, study, technical study of science to be able to actually understand a concept that's complicated. Like, so how do I break it down and make it digestible? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's such a great series and there are so many different animals that you can do it with. Um, so- Sadly, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, right, unfortunately. Um, and I was just reading, and I wish I remembered where I read this, that um, cause and effect is one of the most important things for young readers. You know, when they're reading something that's nonfiction, what they really mm. know is that cause and effect. And this series is kind of yeah. like an extended look at cause and effect. You have, let's keep that down. The, uh, the trophic cascade is basically that, right? When this happens, then this happens, yeah. and that's why. Yeah. Yeah, and I think like it's so, I don't obviously understand, like I'm not a teacher for children, but I understand that it's so important, especially for young people to understand that everything's connected. Yes, yeah. Um, so you did, you did sharks first and you have this great video on your website, Fin Conceivable, which I think anybody should go and check out. Did you make that and then start the shark book? Yeah, so initially I made these three infographics and I posted them online and they were like a condensed version of all this information. Um, and those went viral, which then meant that my editor found them online and asked me to write a book. I was still in college though at the time, so I finished my senior thesis year um, and did a, a film of, it's not the same, the film um, goes into more detail and it's 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 different like it has a different slant a little bit mm -hmm. um so i think they pair well together especially when teaching the concepts um but this the film is my senior thesis in college oh that is that is extremely cool well yeah um lilywilliamsart.com is lily's website so anybody watching this who wants to go and check it out can see that there as well as a great educator tab that has coloring pages and posters and other things like that um yeah. <laughs> so since we were talking about polar bears is there anything really interesting that you learned about polar bears? Because of course, if you are a nonfiction author, yeah. even when you're writing something that's a picture book that doesn't have you know, a ton of text, you're still doing a lot of research behind the scenes. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> yeah. It's like all the stuff that you acquire that doesn't go into the book. <laughs> um, yeah, I my favorite fact that I learned is that they're the largest uh, sea mammal so we kind of consider them to be like bears I mean mm -hmm. they are bears but like we don't think of them as like sea 
creatures, but they are technically the largest like sea mammal. Um, and I think that's a fun fact and kids always love that fact. Yeah, oh, that's, that's really interesting. What were some of the, like, when you were doing your research, where did you go to look for information on polar bears? What were some of your sources? So um, now that I've sort of got, um, you know, for the old, if anyone's older and reading or listening to this, you know, I start with a thesis, like what happens if these animals disappear? And then I have to figure out how to like find that information. So I always have to pick a location. Um, so for me, it was like, where do polar bears live? And then like, where in the world did I want to set the book? So I, so I set it in um, Nunavut, Canada, which no one knows, but I know. <laughs> um, and then so I did, I did a lot of research about that landscape specifically. Um, and I got, you know, like a lot of ecology guides to Northern Canada. Um, and that's where I focused like a lot of my energy learning about like Northern Canada, um, the polar bears there, how they kind of navigate that terrain. Um, and then I also, of course, learned about polar bears, like what they eat, how they live. Um, but I, I definitely like focus a lot on like the place as much as the animal. And that makes sense because you're writing about an animal's effect on an ecosystem. So you have to, you have to yeah. look at those things as well. Yeah. What would you say if, um, if you're talking to a young researcher and Sarah here is in first grade, if you are, so if you're talking to a very young researcher who's just starting out, what advice do you have for kids who are really interested in a topic and want to explore it a little bit more? Um, I think it depends obviously on which topic, but I would say get your hands dirty. You know, if you're really interested in worms, like go in your garden and dig around. Um, I think that the best way to learn about things is to go figure them out. And the way, the best way to figure them out is to go spend time in the area, you know, if you're learning about insects or something, like the area they are, you know, if you want to learn about bees, one of the coolest things that I think to do is go sit in front of, you know, a mint bush or something that has a lot of insect activity around it, go sit in front of it and notice how many different bees there are. Because we always think honeybees, you know, but there's all these different types of bees and flies that come and like pollinate these flowers. So, um, you know, get into your environment, get into your landscape, play in your backyard. Um, and then of course read. There's so many good books, you know, out there about all these different topics. And if you, if you, for instance, if you read if polar bears disappeared and you were like, I want to learn about all the birds in Northern Canada <laughs> and mm -hmm. go get a book about birds and learn about birds. Um, I think that reading is so good and reading outside is even better. Oh, yeah, definitely, especially now that we're in northern New York. So now it's almost warm enough to be outside. <laughs> yeah, we're in Colorado, so it's, it's winter and spring every other day. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I think one of the most fascinating things, I'm just going to see if I can show this page in your book, is this idea that the sea ice is, um, the, the more ice there is, the easier it is for the ice to stick around because it reflects the sunlight and keeps the water cooler versus as ice starts to melt, it increases the rate at which the ice melts. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, that is such a fascinating fact and it's not a polar bear fact necessarily, but it is so crucial to polar bears. I think this idea of like, when we talk, we talk about climate change in such like a I think we talk about it in the way we talk about endangered species, like this way where it's like scientists under, get to understand this, but we don't, you know? Yeah. So when I was trying to draw that page, I wanted to make it really easy to understand. The water's dark, you know, so it absorbs the heat mm -hmm. and the ice is cold, so it reflects the sunlight. Um, and that's easy to understand when you look at it, you're like, oh, that's why they're melting. That's why the ice caps are melting. That's why people talk about why the ice caps are melting. Like this is how you can see that this is happening. Um, and luckily I'm the artist and the author. So when I write, I get to envision how I want to portray it. So I, I, I think, and I think visually, so when I write my words, I imagine how I'm going to execute the art. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I can think, okay, well, I need to show 
I need to show this one section visually um, so that someone can see it versus this section is more text with almost a different visual. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Yeah, and that's, I got to say, that's a real advantage. I mean, I love the surprise of having somebody else illustrate my work, but yeah, it's got to be nice to have control over both of those things. I know, I would say, I think it would, as because you're not there, I always wonder, what's it like to just, you know, give up your baby to this, this other person and go, there they go. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a lot of fun because, um, you know, having artistic talent is something that I really admire. So mm -hmm. I'm just excited to see what other people do. <laughs> um, so what you, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but um, what else do you really hope that kids will get out of, um, out of, if polar bears disappeared and out of the series in general? Well, if polar bears disappeared, you know, I end it with talking about how what seems so far away is not so far away. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like what we we're talking about with cause and effect. We think these things across the world are so far away and that they have no impact on us because how could it? It's in Northern Canada. It's not right in front of us. Today's, you know, a beautiful sunny day or whatever. But, um, you know, everything is so interconnected. And because of that, what happens far away does affect us, which means that our actions at home affect something that's happening far away. So as a kid, when you're reading it, I think it's important to remember that your actions affect more than just your friends or your mom or your dad or your sibling. Your actions are big. So it's important to make sure that your actions are kind and conscientious and think about bigger things. Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. And I, I think in a way, it's kind of relevant to what all the kids are experiencing right now. So why are we all staying yes. at home? Because this one thing that we do can have a good effect on everybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, I mean, it ties in very well right now. <laughs> so maybe Sadly. if the virus disappeared, maybe that, that could be like, a, like an update. Yeah. Like, let's let that go away. Um, I always I always do get sad when there's like, when people say, oh, there's so many more animals you could write about or, or you know, oh, it connects well with this right now. And I'm always going, oh, I wish it didn't, you know, because the books are hard to research and they're hard to write about. So uh, it's, I wish less connected to it. <laughs> I, I know what you mean. Sarah, do you have a question? Did you have a question you wanted to ask? Um, so... Can you make a book named if marshmallows dif disappeared? <laughs> Liam, do you want marshmallows to disappear? No. <laughs> Are they endangered? Maybe in your house they're endangered. <laughs> I, I think there's one person that endangers the marshmallows in our house. <laughs> <laughs> right. and I wonder who that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lily, thank you so much. I'm going to stop the recording again. This is Lily Williams. Her series um, if, uh, start, starts with if sharks disappeared, but if polar bears disappeared is number two. If, ele if elephants disappeared just came out. And please check out lilywilliamsart.com. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you. So